kick off our Jessica Jones review. So, after many, many long months of anticipation to get our second of the four planned series for the Defenders being the, you know, ultimate uh, collaboration between them, we have finally gotten Jessica Jones. It released last Friday on Netflix Instant Streaming. There actually is 13 episodes, which makes me happy. Uh, I forgot the Daredevil's 13 episodes as well. I, I like 13 episodes better than just 10. I, I, I like it better than 10. I If it's a really good series, I, I do I do like to round it out at that, that 20 mark, or that a little bit above 20, well, that's, but, that's but it's broadcast. okay. 13, if, if you can show as much... If you got the story done in 13, then fine. That, that works too. Yeah, well, broadcast TV with the episodic, but that's neither here nor there. But yeah, so we get 13 episodes of this, and it... Uh, let me tell you where it stacks up so far. So I'm not totally done with the series. I am eight episodes in. So I've got a really good chunk of the series, enough for me to feel confident that I can review it. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit about it. So plot, if you have never seen our channel, I guess you wouldn't have seen any of our Jessica Jones re uh, stuff leading up to it. But we get into where the comics are from and all this. And uh, But the plot is pretty much Jessica Jones is a private investigator in Hell's Kitchen, New York, I believe. And she's very very strong she can also jump very high and she's pretty darn fast too so she's got her superpowers and for some reason she's a private eye and then they kind of give you glimpses of the past well it turns out she was controlled by this guy uh his name is Kilgrave, or the purple man as we know him from the comics and he was captured and pretty much kept under his mind control powers for months and months and months and months and months and made her do a lot of horrible things that she really regrets and it really it haunts her even to this day in the show. So that's where we pick up with the plot. That's that's pretty much what's moving everything forward. Um, and so, you know, pretty pretty cool plot. I, I think it's a good way of telling stories. And when Marvel came out with it, this was their way of bringing more adult story out there. So I, I do enjoy the plot so far. Now, did they make the Purple Man actually purple? Because when I He wears saw... a lot of purple. He wears a lot of purple. He's not purple himself. Okay, so they had to take that liberty when converted to the TV show, which kind of makes yeah. a little bit more sense in, in the format that they've been going for, kind of realism, even mm -hmm. though it's superhero. So, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, it's still, like, superpowers and stuff like that. So, but you're right, you're right. He wears a lot of purple, and that's why, I mean, they don't actually call him the Purple Man. They'd only call him Kilgrave. I'm calling him the Purple Man, because that's just how I know him. So, that's, that's why I'm going with that. Um, but you do run into some familiar characters. Luke Cage is in there. Uh, they do talk a lot about this being in they they want you to know they almost beat you over the head within in an episode or two to let you know that this does take place in the same universe that all the other marvel universe uh movies uh are taking place in they've referenced the incident a lot just like they did in daredevil now they didn't reference it as much in daredevil but the incident is when aliens invaded new york and they reference that several times in this they even reference the big uh green guy and his crew of uh people and they talk about a hammer guy and like different things they reference those guys pretty pretty heavily at least in one episode so they do want you to know that this is where it takes place and, and i guess moving forward if they ever do want to combine the properties both tv and movies it'd be really cool and we've also heard from some of the actors but that's that's a, another topic for another day um but let's get off to just starting to review it well let's start with the acting now you have jessica's played by Kristen ritter who actually does a really good job. She plays the brooding, self-loathing hero who's got issues excellently well. Because in the comics, uh, now again, I didn't really scour the comics or anything like that. But when you first pick up with Jessica Jones and Alias, the comics, um, she's in a bad place. She Think about it. She was pretty much mind-raped for nine, ten months in a row and then let go. Or not let go, or she escaped. And so you can imagine that uh, it, it's a rough place for her. And, Kristen Ritter really does purvey that 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 sentiment very very well. Um, you do feel you you feel for her. You, you're like, oh man, you, you can see her doing these self destructive things like pushing people away, doing stuff like that, and you can tell it's just because you know she was in such a bad place for so long that you know that happens. Now we we talked about this before, and now you've seen how far did they go with that? Did they? For Netflix, like, was it 
graphic um, of what they went into? No, they, Netflix, you can tell Marvel definitely reined them in. Netflix would have gone a lot farther so, with it. So they, they pulled back on the punches for Yeah, for they, it, they didn't sacrifice the story to pull back on the punches. Mm. A lot well, of the stuff is still there, but it's not quite as graphic as it was in the comics. So it, they they still give you everything, but they, they kind of... You know, they do the thing where instead of just showing a naked girl, she's under sheets or something like that, you know, and, and which brings it back to what Marvel does with the rest of their stuff. Now, the whole although, although Marvel Parker, made Jessica Jones and did all the stuff with Jessica Jones. In yeah, the but comic. now it's a little different than it used yeah. to be. OK, when they started launching their movies, there's a reason they aimed for PG. Or, or maybe when Disney uh, bought them out, it was like, yeah, yeah maybe I still we think, don't I want think Marvel would have done the same thing. I honestly think Marvel would have done the same thing because, again, they're trying to make sure that it fits in the universe. Mm. Maybe a darker part of the universe, but definitely that it fits. So, Christian Ritter, excellent job. Excellent job. There was a couple actresses I remember hearing that were up for the part that I thought would have been better. But, yeah, you know, I I can't complain at all about her performance. She does excellent all the way through. Believable. As believable as it can be about somebody with superpowers. So, I that's that um then we have david Tennant. uh you might know him as one of the doctors from doctor who i think he was two doctors ago if i remember correctly a lot of very good doctor i liked him yeah a lot of people loved him as the doctor and uh he plays Kilgrave, aka the purple man and he's spectacular the best parts of the show which i'll get into this in a little bit but he's not in the show very much in the first several episodes but when I really started getting into it was when he started popping up more and more and more. He's the best part of the show so far, in my opinion. And that's because I love villains. I mean, I love the villains just because they make me like the heroes. But I love the villains not because I love what they do, or, but because they get the biggest emotional reaction out of me, the, the villains do. They either make me feel disgusted or, you know, vindicated when they get finally put in their place. If you don't have a good villain, I've said this a million times, you don't have a good movie. Uh, especially in a in a series like this or a good TV show. You need a charismatic villain. You have to understand why he can do this and why you hate him for doing this. You, you know, And David Tennant brings an amazing... I, I mean, uh, take Sociopath to a new level in this, and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's just a, a great performance by him. I almost would be willing to watch this entire show without anybody else but David, David Tennant. <laughs> just let's do the Adventures of Purple Man, and I would be happy with the show, even no, though I feel horrible. Show. That yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel horrible after every episode I watch, but I would be like, wow, that made me resonate something, whether I hated him or I hated him even more. I don't I don't know. You can't really like a guy who, who makes people do things like shoot themselves for no reason. So, yeah, not a lovable character, but he plays it excellently. And the last main character, there's plenty of side characters. You have Carrie Moss is in this. Um, she's uh, from... She's Trinity from The Matrix. Uh, she plays a good role. There's a couple other actresses. Uh, I think I can't remember her name, but she was in one of the Transformers movies. She plays one, Jessica Jones's best friend. Again, littler parts. All of the bit actors do well, and even the you know the slightly bigger supporting role actors do well. But the only other character outside of Jessica Jones and the Purple Man that really you have a lot of interest in is Luke Cage, and they bring him in there. They bring him in there well. Um, I think the way they kind of showed how, the, how he has the powers is really cool. There's a little bar fight, uh, an episode or two in, and it's uh, very interesting to see. I won't spoil anything, but uh, watching Jessica and Luke Cage do their thing it is pretty cool. And Mike Carter is the guy who plays him. He does excellent. I mean, he looks exactly like I would imagine Luke Cage to look. He sounds like I would imagine Luke Cage to sound. And everything I know about Luke Cage, it just feels like he is the right character. And it almost gets me more excited for the Luke Cage TV show. Uh, I want to see him out there doing his thing all by himself, you know, without, you know, any of the other stuff going on around him, just more of the Luke Cage storyline. So excellent acting. I top to bottom, excellent job. It was excellently cast uh, and the, you know, everything goes smoothly. So I, I really did enjoy all of that. And then the next thing to, that we're going to grade on is the dialogue and directing. Um, and I'm kind of putting this all in one. I usually break it up into the writing and directing, but I'm going to just throw it all in there. And it, it works very well. The dialogue is smooth. It feels real. One thing I noticed about this is when they establish these characters, these characters feel like that. That's what they how they would react. You know, sometimes it's so often you get these TV shows and movies who are like, okay, this is your character. 
and then they do something totally out of character within the show or the movie and it's just like huh wait no that's not what what huh why is he going that way uh huh and and these guys actually you know jessica jones brooding you know self-destructive hero she does plenty of things that you're like yep okay yeah. Makes sense well, the, that you would do the that. The Netflix Marvel matchup has done good with that. So, well, they did well with that with Daredevil too, right? Oh, so, excellent. I mean, excellent. The, maybe they have an advantage just because there's so much rich story already laid down for these characters mm-hmm. to, to go from. Yeah. But, and you're right. The characters have been laid out pretty well. But even with stuff like that, you can get yeah, you can do mix it ups. You can, yeah. And they did. They did it very excellent. And I, I, I put that on the writing. And I also put it on on directing because the director is supposed to just kind of take the pieces and mold it all together. And so it's it's very well done on both sides of that coin. So I, I'm, I'm extremely happy with that. I, I couldn't fault any of it. There was a couple of things with the first two episodes. They were kind of doing some interesting camera angles here and there. And I was just like, eh. But they kind of dropped it, it felt like, towards <laughs> after that. So it was like, all right, well, you know, cool. We're good. Um, and then so that's the basic things, the plot the acting and the directing slash writing all get flying colors. My overall review though, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm all seven that, episodes in everything. Yeah. That's the problem. And it should be a resounding five out of five, you know, throwing it right up there, but there's something kind of holding me back. I don't know what it is though. That's the problem as, a, and it's hard to explain it to people when I don't even understand, but, I'm watching this show, and yes, I do want to continue to watch it, and I'm I'm hooked. I did watch like three episodes a day, and I just wanted to keep watching more and more and more. But there's just something. I guess I guess maybe it just felt off, and I guess because I'm only on episode eight, and they're just now really starting to put Kilgrave in the forefront. So maybe that was it. Maybe before that, I was just yearning for a little more Kilgrave in there, the Purple Man. And now I'm finally starting to get it, and so I feel different. But the first five episodes, I would have rated different than I would have rated episode six and seven. And had six, had I not watched six and seven, you'd probably have a totally different review here. Well, that's more than halfway uh, through the, the series. Were. Right. Yeah, that's more. And usually or, I feel like if I watch at least four or five episodes of a show that's only 13 episodes long, I can give an accurate review. But it wouldn't have been so with just the eight, the, the five that I would have seen. And it's it's interesting because it definitely it's a slow start here. Having slower start, yeah. But again, they're they're setting some up, and there is some good parts. Don't get me wrong, but it's just when when Kilgrave really like they don't even show his face really until the, like fourth episode. They talk about him, but he's never really a presence there. And then he's when he is the first time he makes his real presence known, he kind of just stands there and stares, and you're but you're like hmm. <laughs> this guy, that stare, yeah, that's pretty malicious and evil. Oh, he's he's up to something. Uh, but then when you he starts unveiling his evil plans, you're just like, wow, <laughs> wow, this guy's really, he's a sick, sadi- uh, sadistic guy, and it makes you love it more and more. So I'm gonna give this one a four out of five, and possibly that rating would go up considering I've I would have literally had I not watched episode six and seven. I would have given it like a three, three and a half. So not mm-hmm. a great score, but the, uh, you know, bringing Kilgrave more to the front has really risen that, made that show rise in my opinion. So I'm going to give it a four out of five. Definitely a solid show to watch. If you have any interest at all in any type of like detective type show, yeah, there's some hero stuff there, but this is not the superhero genre that we're used to seeing on the big screen. This is, you know, the street level heroes and, Overall, I just I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed the series so far. I am hooked now.